Hey guys, welcome back to uh, the Steel City Styrene Mountain. Been a little while since we've done a video on this side of the uh, channel, so to speak, the side of the channel. Uh, what this video is to be dedicated to is the final uh, reveal, uh, final video for the Tactical Jackalope Texas Andy top speed build. Uh, I will be sending him pictures of the completed build, the beauty shots that I took. Uh, later on after I finish filming this, but we're going to cover basically everything here in a video. Now, I would have liked to have done uh, a number of update videos, but it just seemed like uh, I, I had nothing to talk about, nothing to update really, and then a conversation occurred between a friend of mine uh, about the fact that you know, the club that he is loosely attached to was hosting a model club show, or a model show and a swap meet vendor thing, out in Columbus, Ohio, uh, a month ago now. And, you know, it'd be great if I could get out there and, you know, finish. Could I, do you think I have anything to finish? And I said, well, you know, there's really not that many parts to this McLaren. And, you know, if I really just, you know, sat down and hammered it out, I think I could probably get it done in time for the show. That, that time that was giving me like three weeks. And, uh, that means I finished the, this build a month ago. So I've actually had it done this whole time. And I just, you know, for various things, work and kids and, and life, just never got around to filming the video for it. I kept saying, I was going, oh, I'm going to film a video this week, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'd get sidetracked, or work will keep me late, and I got a house to myself today, so we're going to catch up on uh, a lot of the things that have sort of slid by the wayside as far as video ideas that I've had in the last month. And so, like I said, this one is a, has a rap video on it. We've, uh, not the boom chicka oh, yeah kind of rap, but a, a, a completion uh, for that build. And uh, we're going to take the camera, and we'll spin her on around, and hopefully they're between... Uh, the light coming in through the window behind me here and the light overhead. We should have enough to actually uh, talk about this. I didn't really want the harsh light of the downstairs. Plus, I'm working on another website that I run, and I've just really been focused on that for the last couple of days. So I moved this up out of the basement so I'd actually not be, you know, hiding from my family and whatnot. You know, <laughs> they're, they're, well, they're all gone today because they're at school and work and stuff. But, you know, when they're here at night, I can at least, you know, wave at them in the other room or, you know, help make dinner and stuff and, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Enough blathering. Let's flip the camera and look at some models. Alrighty, here we are. For anybody who uh, either belongs to the uh, Staff Project Facebook page or you belong to uh, the Styron Syndicate Google Plus page, you've already seen this uh, car. You've already seen the beauty shots that I took outside. I really would have liked to have done this video outside in the sun, but it has been raining of a biblical proportion probably for the last 72 hours to the point now where in a charming piece of 1950s plumbing, my uh, laundry area plums directly outside into a creek, which is probably not the most environmentally sensitive thing in the world, but I'm certainly not about to dig up my entire 75-foot-long driveway over it. And... Uh, the creek is fed by a pond, and the pond is overflowing, and the creek is running so high that I cannot wash my own laundry right now because I ran a load of laundry through my house, and my basement got wet. Fortunately, I have cement floors, and it's not finished over there, so I just squeegee it all back down there. But what does this have to do with anything? Well, it's not sunny, so we're going to work with the light we're given here. Uh, this, guys, is a representation. Ta-da! Whoop, that's wrong. This is the point it in. Ta-da! Of a... 2014 racing series, Team Butsen-Guignon, a French-Belgian connection there. Uh, bonus points if you know who Mr. Butsen is, uh, or, or perhaps it would be Buzen, or who knows, whatever. But I've been saying Butsen-Guignon all this time, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, their entry into the... First race of the Bank Plane Endurance Series Sprint GT Series because the Bank Plane Endurance Series has some short three-hour races at the very beginning, and then goes into a series of endor actual endurance races, including the 24 hours of Spa and the uh, 24 hours or the thousand kilometers at Nuremberg Ring. Uh, this was the first race of the year, as far as that goes. Uh, <laughs> the name of which is leaving me as I sit here and talk to you because I really didn't, you know, think this out necessarily. Normally I rehearse these videos in advance, so I need to go pull a picture real quick here. Uh, ta-da, ta-da. 
At any rate, I mean, because you're still looking at it. I'm I'm online surfing for something, but you're, you have a still picture of this car. The uh, car itself is the Fujimi 2013 McLaren MP412C GT3 kit. Uh, the car itself is known as a 12C now because they sort of dropped the whole MP4 part. Uh, is the second variation of this kit. There was a sort of a earlier version that was like a 2011, 2012 uh, kit. The 2013 kit, uh, they changed the wing, they changed the wing supports, they changed this air intake in the back, The these sort of gills up front here, I'm not sure how they show is actually being gills rather than just being a black area, but they're actually sort of intake gills up here for uh, fresh air and braking and aerodynamic purposes, of course. These are different in the kit. Uh, and then the wheels are 10 spokes, and the original ones were like 6 or 7 spokes. It caused a great deal of consternation because one of the first decal sets that was offered for this kit aftermarket was of a 2013 car, which is what you know this kit is, but it's not what the kit was released as, and everybody was crying a river about the wings and the wheels and stuff like that, when it wound up being, you know, no big deal. <laughs> it... Uh, is exactly what it's supposed to be as far as that kit goes. Now, this is one of two entries from uh, Boots and Guignon for this, well, five en- or five entries, three entries altogether, two of which were Pro-Am entries, which is this is one of, and then they had a regular what they call Pro-Cup, which is a prof- you know solely professional uh, entry as well. The... Two Pro Am cars, uh, you know, they didn't do too bad in the Pro Am themselves. However, in an overall sense, like you know where they finished, you know, in the race period. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Well, yeah, not really all that great. Not, not, not that great. It was uh, definitely one of those races where uh, they. This car was the higher placing of the two. We found up wound up being 23rd overall, which was good enough for 5th place in Pro-Am. Uh, you know, probably not exactly where uh, they would have liked to have uh, finished, as, in, in the sense. Uh, Cry me six. I, I went to look for pictures at some place, and, uh, you know, what? It was just not the, uh, not the right place. <laughs> anyway, the race will come to me, I guess. This kit... Uh, besides, is built strictly box stock, out of the box. There's no additional photo etch or anything to it. The only real uh, additional stuff, of course, would be the uh, use of the Studio 27 graphics package, the set of decals, as well as and we'll show better photos or better angles of it when I pick it up and try to picture it to the camera and stuff like that. Also uses a Studio 27 carbon fiber detail set. Um, Probably somewhere around a fifth of which I could not use with this kit in the end because of the fact that the kit itself is a 2013 version with all of the 2013 uh, changes, like I said, the wing and all that stuff. And uh, those decals were made to fit the 2012 kit, and therefore it uh, you know doesn't fit. There should be basically... Uh, this entire area, this entire wing back here should be carbon fiber. The wing, the the winglets, top and bottom of the wing, front and back of the winglets, as well as the wing supports themselves, uh, they should all be carbon fiber. But none of that carbon fiber uh, fits this new wing. <laughs> the uh, trying to think what else. Well, the the seat in here, which probably you will never be able to see, and I'll, I'll show a picture, still picture at the end of the interior, the one one picture I remember to take of it before I actually assembled the kit. The seat in here is also different for 2013 kit, but the seat doesn't fit with the roll cage because the roll cage was never modified to accept the new seat, and the decals from the uh, carbon fiber set only fit the old seat, which is what I wound up using because getting this thing together in the wee hours of the morning, uh, I gave up on trying to fit the old fit the new seat in there and just went with the old one because it fits perfectly with the old seat. Uh, overall in this kit, guys, fit and finish is fantastic. Uh, like front to back and side to side, top to bottom, and a whole nine yards. Let me make my camera keep 
panning in and out of focus like that. Uh, the only real, you know, if you want to complain about anything fit and finish wise, this thing might fit and finish a little too tight, if that makes any sense. Uh, for example, when you, uh, you know, you look into, well, the chassis pan itself, as I try to, I'm trying to do this without getting too much of the junk in the background of this living, or this dining room wall in, uh, you know, this, you can barely, barely see the fact that, like, up here, the, there's, you know, a silver, uh, steering arm that goes between the two of them. You know, this is just universally flat black, basically. Uh, a little, little wear on the tires, because you don't want them to be too new. But, these tires are on here so tight, due to the way that they, everything just fits together, that they don't roll, and these steer, these front tires don't steer. Now, I have never been a really big person on the entire, oh, I want my, th- my, my, my model kit to steer and to, and to turn and all that stuff. I, you know, it's just, it's never been a really big thing for me. I don't, I've never been a, you know, big proponent of functional steering as far as that goes. And I'm certainly not about to take this thing after spending somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 hours putting decals on this thing from top to bottom, uh, and go vroom, vroom, vroom and play with it on the floor. So I don't care if the wheels don't turn. Uh, however, it did get, you know, in a situation where putting the wheels on was a little bit of a delicate operation because they required, you know, a little more force than I feel was, should be necessary because of the fact that everything is so tightly fitting. Uh, but, you know, in the end, it wound up fitting just fine, and there were no major uh, issues with it. Um, let's see here if I can sort of do this. The engine is... Locked safely away behind this uh, bulletproof pane of glass. Well, probably not bulletproof pane, but it's, uh, you know, this does not come open. It's it's glued down. It's not supposed to come open. Uh, the engine in here is a one-piece just engraving. It's not even an insert, really. Uh, even this little teeny wee little filler cap right here is, you know, engraved in, obviously. Uh, painted it to reflect it being an actual filler cap as opposed to just being a blob of plastic. Let's see. Come on. Let's see if we get a focus now. Yes? No? Maybe so? It's sincerely really not going to focus on this at all. Let's see. Move this ugh, out of the way. See, oh, I'm sure that's probably not going to help anything with that wood grain. But uh, hey, there it did. It did help. So apparently, trying to ring, trying to focus on that three ring binder was a problem. Sorry for the dust here, guys. I meant to dust this thing before I started, but I forgot the paintbrush downstairs, and I'm just too lazy. So, uh, you know, like I said everything in here is all one. One big blob, and it's all been picked out with various shades of uh, Tamiya paint and flat black, gloss black, little uh, NATO black in there. Because you know, shout out to the to the military builders that are in this build with me. Uh, the only real separate parts to this thing are the exhaust system, which literally is these pipes that go back into the back, and then this roll cage V roll cage part was separate. Everything else in here is just one big block. You know, I, I'm sure that you could probably spend, you know, hours detailing that and taking it apart and, like, scratch building it up from nothing kind of thing. But, man, I wasn't going to do that even if I wasn't in a hurry. Uh, let's see here. Here's the uh, back end here. Uh, uh, the exhaust pipes come out here. We've got gunmetal on the end of them there to give them a little color so they're not just, you know, straight-up silver. Uh, hall red on the tow hooks front and back. And then back here on the back, we have this whole uh, comb area. Maybe. <laughs> I don't want to set it on its top because it's kind of on the top. And I don't want to bust it. Oh, you were 
One carbon fiber decal with those a whip of a comb across and so there's one carbon fiber decal for each side of the tent. This area right here is one piece of around the outside edge and run it all in and then there's the top and bottom of each one of these little loop lines. Am I losing your mind? Carbon fiber. Unfortunately, I don't think you're going to be able to see the carbon fiber that's on the inside and the outside of the still pictures that I think are curious. There's also a carbon fiber area. <coughs> carbon fiber area in the front here. <laughs> nah, I feel like I woke up. If you clicked underneath the decal, something that's not probably what it's worth. And I didn't have a clear cut over the decals because I just want to assume that I don't believe that looks realistic. Could over time these decals peel off here? Well, yeah, surely. The uh, over time these decals could come off here, but it's going to be stored in a case. Uh, well, this will probably be the last time it's, it will. Monday, when I go to club meeting, because the club guys haven't seen this yet, Monday will be the last time this thing's out of a case until uh, the fall show season starts. It's not like I'm going to leave this thing out on a shelf and it's going to get exposed to UV and, and direct sunlight and all that kind of stuff. It is going to be locked safely away. It's not going to be touched. It's not going to be played with. So I don't think that really, technically speaking, there's a whole heck of a lot of chance of these you know, coming off over the course of time. You know, 20 years from now, we come back and look at this, and it'll look like crap, probably. But you know, that's 20 years from now. It's not right this instant. So, uh, the mirrors, the uh, mirror, you know, outside surround of the mirror, as well as the inner gill here, are painted. Uh, well, I should say, let me put change what I said there. This mirror is painted. This mirror is painted just regular, off the shelf to me, at acrylic orange. I think that's like. I don't know, X4 maybe? That seems like what it is. And then this uh, gill is actually a decal. And then this back here, all this radiator area, which I don't believe you can actually really even see. Eh. Anyway, this is like a four, this this is four pieces all together in all the stuff back here. There's there's like a, the, the, the surround is metallic gray, and then the radiator is... Uh, aluminum with a, a, a wash to sort of pick the, the gills out without making everything be a uniform blank blah uh, color. And then uh, this, the actual orange part of this gill is a decal. What I really thought was pretty spiffy about it is the fact that X4 matches all the rest of these decals perfectly fine. I didn't mix anything into that. We're talking about you know, just you know, sheer stupidity of luck, really. I was like, I thought that these mirror cover, these mirror Colors covers were uh, already a decal because in several other versions of their uh, Studio 27 decals, these mirror covers are decals, and there were numbers calling out these tiny, weeny, itsy bitsy. You probably can't even see them. Boots and Guignon logos that are on these mirrors.
that match the the race car Boutin, Boutin Guignon logo that's on the front and the back. Uh, so I thought, like I said, I thought this was a was a decal. Turns out, no, it's not. And it was really obvious that by looking at pictures of these that the that these mirrors were orange in every race it ran. This guy's, by the way, I finally looked it up while I was blathering incoherently. It represents the 2014 Monza race, which is three hours of Monza. So now you know. Uh, all I can't, I have nothing bad to say about these decals whatsoever. Now they were a brand new set of decals that just came out. I want to say maybe three months ago. So these are freshy, fresh, fresh, fresh decals. Uh, you know, I have some older Studio 27 stuff from like 2011, 2010 that I haven't really played around with. And these, like I said, are brand new decals. So there surely shouldn't have been any problems with them. Uh, also, there's carbon fiber right here and the surround around the gas inlet. And then there's a decal on the carbon fiber. Oh, ho, look at that. Uh, there's also a decal on the decal right there. So many decals. Uh, so many of these, these things like, uh, Arabian Bemco, uh, this uh, all sod are uh, are are, are, are Arabian. <laughs> well, it says Arabian Memco. It got me on that thought. But they are Saudi Arabian based oil field and power company construction things. So it's kind of interesting to to sort of do some reading about the sponsors as I was building it. Crystal Towers is a, is a you know big development in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this uh, terminal mechanic at Pompeii makes. Pumps for oil fields. Of course, Pirelli has tires, but uh, Fila Holdings is the former company that used to own Fila Footwear, but they sold it. And then, uh, you know, just a bunch of this, you know, this McLaren of Brussels on the back wing here. They're advertising their own self on the wing back here. Uh, the only thing I didn't ever look up was where this Red Rock Village and Spa was. But uh, Demco Steel Industries, you know, is like casing for for energy uh, drilling. So it's all very much a uh, natural gas connected sort of uh, industry <laughs> on this one. So it's really kind of interesting. Like I said, just, just do the search of these sponsorships because you know, the car, like I said, is based out of Belgium. So it's not like any of this stuff would be familiar to the average uh, dopey American. Um, I don't know. I really don't have much else to say about it. This kit is like 60 pieces, give or take, including the wheels. Uh, the wheels themselves. Are just uh, Tamiya semi-gloss black with a with the hub picked out in uh, titanium silver. Uh, tire decals worked out really nice, laid down really well. No silvering or anything else like that. Again, that might be more to do with the fresh set of the decals than anything else. Brakes are steel and uh, metallic gray and aluminum. Can't really see them that well anymore with a wash to help pick out the cross vented nature, cross ventedness of those wheels. Which you really can't see in this video. You'd have to sort of kind of see it in person or in the still shots to appreciate it. Uh, and then these uprights back here are painted, uh, semi gloss black and titanium again. And they really are like this. I thought about drilling this center part out if the center part didn't have anything to do with it, but the center part is really there in real life, so I left it alone. <coughs> and like I said, I have no, no complaints at all about the way this, this, these decals laid down. These ones that go over these, these, Vents up here, which includes the bank plane number up front here, and the the I assume this is the Dutch flag over, or not the Dutch flag, but the Belgian Belgium Belgish flag over here. You know, it took quite a bit of of, of decal setting solution to get both of these to sit, and actually, because you there's no there are tiny slats through here, but they're not actually holes. And on the real car, these are more taped over than they are actually, you know, just decals over some slats. The, on the real car, they're not actually, like, individually, you know, pieces. It's a piece of tape that goes across here to sort of either, uh, or they're not there at all, depending on what race they were in, to either, you know, keep the brakes warm if it was cold outside, because the first of the Monza race that this replicates is in, like, April in, you know, Italy, so it's kind of chilly still. And then in later races, you'll see that those aren't there at all because they need all the cooling they can get for the brakes themselves. This gets uh, kind of interesting. This construction, when you uh, take it apart, this whole side piece here from from like this from the junction of the front door to the junction of the back door, uh, as well as then along this line right here, this whole piece 
the, this whole thing is four pieces, like we said, that fits in from the inside. But this whole area of the driver's door and this little area of the back fender here, this is all a separate piece. When you get this thing uh, from Fujimi, and I was like, oh, God, don't let the cat hit it. <laughs> you get this thing from Fujimi, there's a great big, what looks like a stirring stick or a, a tongue depressor molded in here to keep the kit from you know folding up when it uh, when it's in shipment. But you have to cut the whole thing out, put the whole side on here, and then there's these little sort of uh, over fender-ish looking things. I don't know how well that's going to show. Let me move the camera this way. Try to get a. But you see that the, that this area here is, you know, it's there's a hole in it. It goes through into there. So this is just an aerodynamic uh, gill feature, basically, that uh, you know takes a takes a little bit of patience to get that lined up because there's no there's positive mounting at the top of the fender but down here it's just like eh it glues to the bottom of the car good luck <coughs> so guys that is the McLaren 12C 2014 uh, Bonk Plane Endurance Sprint GT Series 3 hours of Monza 23rd place overall 5th place class finishing race car really enjoyed putting it together really want to thank uh texas andy who are well, everybody calls him texas andy on the forums and i i i realized i knew him after i'd entered this contest from a different forum that i belong to but i want to thank andy and everybody who's gonna be doing the judging uh, I, i'm not uh, kissing any butt or anything uh, uh. but i was, but uh really this was an interesting opportunity to get a kit done in a short amount of time actually like i said since i finished this uh for a contest on march the 12th or 14th it's been done for a month. I just haven't gotten around to actually putting the video up for it. So I actually found out that I can finish a model that I'm uh, really proud of. I mean, I really I have some complaints about it, but there's nothing that unless I sat you down with it and made you pick the nits with me that you would really probably be able to see, especially just on the video. Uh, and, you know, it's something I came out happy with. I, I have, you know, sort of since coming back into the hobby, gotten into the entire sort of uh, genre, if you will, of... Everything has to be exactly perfect, and I don't want to screw up anything. And it's gotten to the point where, in addition to having way too many things, I was also sort of paralyzed by not wanting to build things based on the fact that I didn't want to ruin them, if that makes any sense. I don't know if the military guys out there can sort of, uh, you know, get a just with that or not. Uh, I'm not sure if there's tanks or whatever out there that you're, you want to attempt, but you're scared to build them. Or not scared of, but just, you know, you don't want to, you spent a lot of money on them, you don't want to ruin them. Uh, you know, I spent a lot of money on a lot of Tamiya kits uh, for, like, the LFA and the LaFerrari and the Enzo and stuff like that. And I don't want to screw them up because they were kind of expensive. And, you know, I've, you know, and you see really good builds of stuff and you want to build them the same sort of quality. But this proved to me that I can build a competent build. I mean, it's probably never going to actually win a contest, but that's not what the point was. Well, it'd be nice if it won this contest. But it's never going to win an actual <laughs> judge contest because it's curbside and, you know, it's box stock. And, you know, if you put this thing in competition like I did, I stuck this thing in just competition circle class. I mean, I didn't even vote for it. It was a, it was a participant vote. You had to enter the contest in order to vote in the con, to vote for the other, con, the uh, participants. And I couldn't, you know, the, the old gag of voting for your own stuff in one of those shows, I couldn't do that because there was a Porsche 917K that was almost totally scratch built. And it was just a beautiful, beauty of a build, fantastic thing. And because of that, you know, like I said, this is never going to win anything in that sense. Uh, it probably really doesn't have much of a shot in this contest either from a, from an overall sense of people are, you know, building diorama bases for figures and, and wheels off, you know, assembling a P51 out of bailing wire and MacGyver parts and, and, and doing a great job with that. And, you know, I've, I, I've watched, I haven't commented on too many things, but I've watched most of the of the update videos for everybody, and you know, uh, I sort of feel you know well, cool, a little bit on the outside looking in, bit, building a car when everybody else is building military stuff. But beyond that, it's you know, it was a very basic kit, and a lot of people have spent probably a lot more time and uh, engaged themselves in a lot more effort than uh, you know I did in Ultimate Sense. You know, building this thing it took like three days, decaling it took another two days on top of it. 
So uh, well, I'm really happy with the way the decals turned out, too. So I will take all of the accolades for the decals that I can handle because those really were quite an adventure. I'm going to close this curtain behind me here. Kill off some of the light. And so I guess that's it. Uh, anybody else wants to have a contest that I can enter so I can build some stuff? <laughs> I realize this is a, that's a really piss poor reason to build something, but it really is what it came down to. It was like, oh, well, this gives me the opportunity to build something, and I'll see if I can get it done in two months. And I did, so success. Uh, Andy, you got you got a model out of me in two months. Say, and that's something that's taken a year in other, con- uh, other conditions. So anyway, guys. We've got uh, lots more Styrene Mountain stuff coming to you. I have literally boxes of stuff to show you from the What Have I Wasted My Money On category. And uh, we'll see you guys on the other side. <laughs>